Travis with TCustoms Productions, TCustoms.com. Today we're back with part two of the how to sample an Ableton Live 9 series. In the last video, just to recap really quickly, was just an easy jump start into how you can utilize the slice to new MIDI track feature in Ableton Live 9 and very easily, very quickly get in and chop and start uh, making your sample based production. We got in, we drag on our audio sample, put in our warp markers, we sliced a new MIDI track, and this was the MIDI track that Ableton auto generated for us. It's a drum rack, um, all of our samples in the individual cells. Today, what I want to do is I want to discuss some more of the advanced functionality and features that you're probably gonna to wanna to take advantage of as a sample based producer, further control and manipulation over the samples. And you're very limited with the basic built-in uh, slicing preset. And that's exactly what we're gonna to do today is discuss how you can create a custom slicing preset for this slice to new MIDI track feature in Ableton. You'll have access to some of the more advanced settings, like sustain, like cutting off the previous samples that were triggered, a lot of these little things that we're gonna get into. So that's what I wanna get into right now is creating a custom slice preset. By default, Ableton is using a simpler instrument in each of these drum cells. But for our custom slice preset, what we're gonna to wanna to use is an Ableton sampler. As you can see right here, a sampler is very basic and you only have a finite number of controls. With a sampler, you have multiple tabs here. There's a lot more you can do inside a sampler. You can use a sampler if you want. I just highly encourage you to use a sampler when you're creating a custom slice preset. And so the way that we're gonna do this is, as you can see, this is a drum rack. So that's what we're gonna start out with is an empty drum rack. We're just gonna drag over a drum rack instrument into a blank MIDI track. You can see that C1 is the first cell that's highlighted. And what we wanna do here is we wanna drag over a sampler inside of that C1 cell. And so again, when you use the slice and new MIDI track feature, now once we save this preset, it will use a sampler and it will save any settings, any things that we've mapped or any changes that we've made within these settings, it will automatically save those so you don't have to change that once you slice your sample. Now what would be some of these settings that we might want to, to utilize uh, when we chop our sample? Well, I'm gonna set this up as if I was setting up a slice preset for myself. And if you have other settings and different things that you wanna set up or you don't need all of what I'm gonna be touching on here, you can feel free to change that and customize that to what's best for you. But for me, one of the very first things that I know I need is I need a global pitch or transpose set up for my sample. So basically, if I wanna take a sample at standard speed and I wanna pitch it up four, five, six, seven half steps, I wanna be able to do that from one global setting. So in order to do this, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna map a global macro inside of the drum rack. It's very easy to do, and all you're gonna to wanna to do is inside of this sampler that you drug into C1, you wanna to go to the pitch oscillation uh, tab here at the top, and you want to identify the transpose, which is right here. All we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on this uh, right here, and we're gonna say map to macro one. And so what you can see that this did is it put this transpose over here on this very first knob in this macro one. Other thing I'll encourage you to do is go ahead and take this up to zero. And that way when you chop your samples, it won't start it at negative 48 half steps. It's gonna start it back at zero and that will be the original speed and key. And from there you can pitch all of your samples from one global setting right here. So the next thing that I want is I want, uh, when I trigger a new sample, I want to make sure that it cuts off any existing samples or anything that's playing before that. You may have seen other NPC users or other drum machine users that uh, they'll trigger a sample and they'll hit a new one and it just cuts off whatever is playing prior. And that's what we wanna set up. And in Ableton, we're gonna be setting up a, a choke group, okay? And I wanna step you through how you can set up a choke group is one simple setting. It will put all of your samples into a single choke group and that's the way that you're able to get that cutoff effect. So what we're gonna do is in this drum rack, we're gonna click on the show hide chain list, which is this second um, button here. And then we're gonna click on IO, input output. And what you're gonna see is in this chain, it expanded this out and you will see a choke setting up here at the top. And what, all we wanna do is we wanna change this from none and we just wanna pick a number. It really doesn't matter. You can pick one, 16, anything in between. Ableton gives you 16 choke group, but for this example, we only need one. This is all we need to do. So setting up that choke group with any of these numbers, one through 16 is gonna get you that cutoff effect. Next, we wanna go on to a few more settings that I definitely need access to in my custom slice preset. So we wanna go back to filter global 
uh, at the top right here. So we wanna click on Filter Global. Many times you'll see MPC users or other drum machine users that they'll hit a pad, hit the keyboard or whatever, and it just continues to play on without them holding that pad or key down. And so what we wanna do is we wanna increase the release of that sample. Uh, by default, in Ableton, it's set up at 50 milliseconds. So that means only 50 milliseconds after you release the pad or key, it's gonna stop playing that sample. And so what I do, I mean, you can change this to however you like. I just take it all the way up. 60 seconds is the max here. And so that will make sure that whenever you hit the pad or hit the key, it will continue playing that sample on. We took the release all the way up to 60 seconds. Okay, so the next setting I'm gonna change is I'm actually gonna bring this global volume velocity setting right here. I'm gonna bring this up to about halfway. And it described in Ableton as how much influence MIDI note velocity will have on the sampler's volume. If you don't bring this percentage up at all and you leave it at zero, what's gonna happen is whenever you try to change the velocities of your individual MIDI notes, you're not gonna hear a variation in the volumes of those sample chops. I've experimented with, with some of these and you can get in and change it for yourself. I usually leave it right in the middle, somewhere in this range right here. So I'm gonna leave it at about 50%. And again, you can feel free to experiment with that. The next thing that I personally wanna do for my custom slice preset under the filter global tab is map the attack to a global macro like we did for the transpose. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click again and hit map to macro two. And so if we scroll over, you'll see transpose is here and we set that up to zero and then we got the attack here and what this is going to do is like i've talked about in some past videos kind of short fade in uh each of your sample chops so this is just another option for you and this again will be a global parameter again it's optional you can set this up as global or not use this at all uh, this is definitely something that i want for my preset so just to recap we set up the transpose as a global macro uh, we set up the choke group we set our release to 60 seconds we brought our global volume up to about 50 percent here and lastly, we set up a attack macro. All you have to do to save it is click this button here. It says save preset. And you're just gonna name that to whatever. It's gonna make it an ADG file. So I'm just gonna say um, custom slice uh, demo. We'll just call it that. You name it whatever you wanna name it. By default, it's gonna add it in this preset instrument drum rack path here. We actually want this in the defaults slicing folder. We wanna drag this ADG file that we just created into this slicing folder here. So all we're gonna do is go back to this. We identify this ADG file and I'm just gonna drag this, drag this up and drag that right into this slicing folder. And so when you drop down, you should be able to see your slicing preset here. If we go back to the original audio that we chopped up in the last video, if I right click this, because I have all of my slice points like before, I right click and slice the new MIDI track. Instead of using the built in slicing preset, we can now see our custom slice demo preset that we just created. And so I'm gonna hit okay. It's gonna create a new MIDI track like before. We're gonna delete this uh, MIDI sequence. We don't need that. And now what you're gonna notice is all of the settings are like what we set up before. You've got the transpose here. You've got the attack set up here. You're gonna notice that all of your samples are now in the, the first choke group. We scroll over, you're gonna see the release is set at 60 seconds. The global volume is set at 50%. So if I trigger the samples on my MPK 49, So if I shift up the global transpose, we'll now shift up all the samples, let's say three half steps. Uh, we'll do our attack, get that quick fade in on all the samples. recommend getting in here and experimenting with these settings. Don't just take it blindly for what I'm showing you here. If this is all of what you need, great. And you can create your, your preset in a few minutes, but you also want to get in here and look at some of these other settings within the sampler and also your global macros, whatever you have access to in the drum rack. Get one set up custom for you that's going to work best for you and your workflow and type of beats that you create. So that's all that I wanted to cover today in the part two of this, how to sample an Ableton Live 9 series. Hopefully this was helpful. If you need to go back and reference part one, that will be linked somewhere on this video or in the description somewhere. If this video was helpful, please take a second to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And make sure to stay tuned for part three of this video series. I'll be talking about some more advanced functionality that you can utilize with your MIDI controllers, in particular your Akai MPK49 MPD32 controllers. 
and kind of adding and building on what we already have finished here. So thanks again for watching. I will see you in the next video. Peace.